And um, so guys, welcome to the tutorial. Basically today, this is what we're gonna be covering. I'm gonna show you how to create a liquid simulation where you take any object and you can basically just turn it into liquid. So you kind of just drop it and it just turns into liquid and it sits inside the domain and it kind of does its thing. So right now we're not able to play this back at full frame rate, but as you can see, when I drop the head model, it turns into a liquid. So this is actually really easy to do. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this from scratch, just with any object. I'm gonna show you the exact process. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into it. So file, new, general. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one. So guys, the <laughs> this is like literally so easy to do. That's why I'm, I just wanted to drop this tutorial real quick. Delete that default light. Go ahead and click on your cube. Go to object, quick effects, quick liquid. And what that's gonna do is just create a default liquid simulation. So if we go ahead and zoom in here and we play this, you're gonna see that we have all of our particles flowing around. It's basically just taking another cube within our domain or this main cube, turning it into a fluid object and it's dropping it, which is exactly what we're gonna do with any object we want to. So in the past one, I did the head, but we're actually just gonna go ahead and do, for like the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just do the monkey, just so we have a more complex shape than a cube. So I'm gonna actually delete this cube. I'm gonna click on my liquid domain, which you see up here on the top right in the hierarchy. Go over to our physics settings. Um, and then what we wanna do is scroll down to where it says cache, and instead of replay, click on all, and now we're gonna be able to bake our simulation. So go ahead and click on the monkey, make it a fluid object, type is gonna be flow, and then instead of smoke, we're gonna click on liquid, and then keep that on geometry. Now this is where we get to decide what settings we wanna to apply to our physics simulation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click back on the domain. By default, its resolution is 32. So I'm gonna bake this real quick and just to make sure everything is working correctly. It's gonna go ahead through all the way to frame 250. And now if we play this back, you'll see that our simulation is working, but if you look really closely, you'll notice there's not a lot of particles and that's because the resolution is so low. So we're gonna actually go ahead and free all, which is gonna reset our simulation. I'm gonna scroll up and I'm actually gonna give this a resolution division of 100 this time. So now I'm gonna scroll back down and instead of going all the way to frame 250, I'm gonna actually do frame 50 and we're gonna go ahead and save this real quick. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop as fluid sim and I'm just gonna save that so we have it. I'm gonna bake this. Now it's gonna take a quick second to get to frame 50, but go ahead and watch what happens once it's done. It's gonna be much higher resolution and you're gonna have much higher detail within your simulation here. So that's why we're bumping up that resolution. So now if you zoom in before we even play the simulation, do you see how many particles we have now? And that's because when we increase our division, our resolution division, it actually decreases the size of this cube, which is basically the size of the particle. So now I'm gonna to go to my side view here and I'm just gonna play this. And as you can see, we have a much more realistic simulation. Now this only goes to frame 50, which is okay, but you guys can bake this to whatever you want. And that's pretty much the tutorial, but I'm gonna take it a step further and show you guys how it actually turn this into a mesh. So I'm gonna free all. I'm actually gonna click this little button on the right hand side here that says mesh and then I'm gonna go ahead and bake it again. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take all of our particles, convert them into a mesh so that we can actually render this and see this solid object rather than just having the particles. Because before when we baked it, it's just particles. You can't see anything if you go to render view. But now what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna get converted into a mesh. Um, and see, it's almost done here. It's almost on frame 50. And I'm gonna show you guys what that's gonna look like. As soon as it's done, it's gonna show you a preview. So right now we're in wireframe mode, but see how now we have a mesh? So I'm gonna click out of wireframe mode, I'm gonna click on solid mode. Now as you can see, it's not perfect and that's because you can keep raising that divi that um, resolution division. I'm just gonna do 100 for the purposes of the tutorial. If you really wanna get it to be accurate, I would do something like 250 or 300 or even higher if your PC can handle it. But what I'm gonna do is on the right hand side where we have our monkey, Suzanne, I'm gonna actually hide her. So now we only have our physics simulation. So now guys, I'm gonna play this back. As you can see, we have our object turning into liquid. Now we're only going to frame 50 here just for the tutorial. You guys can go as many frames as you want. But as you can see, as soon as the monkey starts to hit the ground, it becomes a liquid. So before it hits the ground, it's not really being affected by anything. So it looks like a solid object. So you can create some really cool animations with this. 
Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly set up a um, I'm just going to snap to my camera and just quickly set up a scene here in cycles. So right now I think we're on EV by default. I got to change my default settings, but I'm going to go ahead and click on EV cycles. I'm going to switch over uh, GPU. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to rendered mode. As you can see, there's really nothing going on right now because our background is just a color. So I'm going to switch it to an environment texture and I'm going to go ahead and open up one of my favorite HDRIs. I think it's this one, maybe this one. Um, and I got this off of Polyhaven. So now as you can see, I actually don't think this was the right one, but we'll just use this one. It's uh, an environment texture. It's loaded up into our scene. I'm gonna click on my camera. I'm actually going to make my resolution 1080 by 1920, which is Instagram portrait native. So now we're in Instagram portrait native. I am gonna go ahead and click on my camera settings, switch that over to an orthographic view because that's just what I like. Uh, add in a plane, I'm just gonna scale that up, bring that down. And then let's go ahead and find out exactly where the bottom is of this domain. So as you can see, it starts to turn to a liquid right there. So I'm gonna bring my plane just below that point, right about there, that looks good. Snap back to my camera view. Now I'm actually gonna to have to really scale this plane up. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the scale as well. And then I'm gonna click on my camera. I'm actually gonna zoom out quite a bit so we can see this full shot here. So now if we play this back, Yep, looks like we have everything in the frame. So I'm gonna click on my plane here. I'm just gonna give it a dark shader. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on my liquid here. And let's go ahead and give that just a slight blue shade. That looks pretty good. Um, this is just a glass BSDF with an IOR of 1.33, which is the default index of refraction of water. So yeah, the, and that I think it automatically adds that. That's what Blender does. I'm going to go ahead to my output properties and I'm going to end this animation at frame 50. So now if we play this back, it should end at 50 and restart. It's going to go a little bit slow. It's not going to be able to play back at 24 frames a second. But as you can see, we have a really cool effect with our monkey turning into a liquid here. So I'm really enjoying how far we've come with just this simple physics simulation. Now you can go ahead and add in materials. You can add in lighting, whatever you guys want. I might go ahead and raise the exposure of the overall scene under color management. I'm just gonna like raise the exposure just a little bit. Um, we're on filmic and then I'm gonna give it a medium contrast look, eh, maybe a little bit more high contrast. That looks really good. So now when we play this back, we have a lot of contrast between our background and the main liquid here. So there's not too much going on in this scene, but I like what we have. And now you guys know how to, how to make any object into a liquid. So if I rendered this out right now, it probably wouldn't take that long. Um, I would probably set my render settings at <laughs> not 4,000 samples, probably more like 150 and just kind of see what that looks like. Uh, we have denoising turned on, open image denoise. I'm not gonna turn on motion blur and I think everything is set up the way that I want. So I'm just gonna render this image and go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, uh, okay, so this is a great, a great point to make. So I made a little mistake here. I forgot to hide Suzanne, the original monkey from the render. So as you can see, it's gonna appear white and that is because that original object has not been hidden from the render. So make sure you go ahead and click this little camera icon over here so that it does not render that object. So let's go ahead and render our scene or render our, just this frame right here. Should take less than 10 seconds here. And if you guys are happy with one frame, you are more than welcome to go ahead and export the whole PNG sequence. Um, I can run you guys through that process real quick, but it will take some time. So I might skip ahead in the actual tutorial. But basically what you would do is you would go over to your output properties. You would click on this little output drop down here and usually it'll default to the temporary file, which I absolutely hate that it does that. You can probably change that, but I'm going to go ahead and just make a, um, I'm going to make a folder on the desktop and I'm just going to call it exported frames. And I'm going to go into that folder. And then for my name of my files, I'm just going to call this Suzanne fluid object. And I'm going to press enter accept. And then what I would do is I'll click render render animation and it would render every single frame in our animation and then you would go ahead and take that and run it through the video sequencer to actually get your animation. Now if you don't want to go ahead and do a PNG sequence that's totally fine. You can also click on this drop down and you can make an FFmpeg video. That's totally fine. The reason that I do the PNG sequence is because if the render fails midway 
you lose all of those frames, okay? You don't get a completed file. So guys, if you are rendering something and you know it's gonna take a while to render, I highly suggest using this method, the PNG sequence method, compared to uh, just a straight video format. Now, if we're in Eevee, even though this probably looked like complete crap in Eevee, let's just see what it looks like. Um, now, yeah, okay, so this is what it looks like in Eevee. It doesn't look very good. Um, there's a lot of settings you need to turn on to make this look good, so I'm not gonna go through that. But if you guys went ahead and rendered that in Eevee, yeah, you can go ahead and export that as an FFmpeg video. That's totally up to you. I just have a personal preference where I think the PNG sequence is superior because if you mess up on frame 25, you go ahead and reopen your document and you resume where you left off. So guys, that is pretty much the tutorial. Um, as you can see, when I play this back, it looks really cool. You can do this with pretty much anything. I'll open up that previous document um, even though that was for a completely separate project and I ended up having this idea. But as you can see, when you play that back, it's just the coolest thing. Uh, originally, I had just a model of a head and I actually added a remesh modifier to it just to make it a little bit simpler so that when that fluid simulation go ahead and takes that object and turns it into a liquid, um, it's actually just much easier for it to process that because there's a lot less vertices. There's not, there's not a lot of complications with that object. Um, let's go back really quick because I'll show you guys one more thing with the fluid simulation. So as you guys know, we did have Suzanne in there, but if I wanted to, I could actually go back and I could completely change that object. So I'm just going to show you one more time really quick. I'm going to run through it as fast as I possibly can. So I'm just going to literally create a new document and show you how fast this is. Ready? Object, quick effects, quick liquid, right? We already have our, our liquid physics simulation. Go over here, change this to all. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete that cube, right? I'm going to add in a torus. I'm going to click on fluid. I'm going to give that a flow, liquid, oops, not fire, sorry, liquid, geometry. And we should be good to go. Just make sure you click on mesh, bake all. I'll just bake this to frame 100. Now watch this, ready? It's going to go through the whole simulation. Now when you play this back, boom, just like that, you have a liquid. Now. This object actually isn't be, being very reactive because it's already sort of a flat object, but it does turn into a liquid as you can see. So guys, you can also mess with other settings uh, in field weights such as gravity, wind, etc. If you turn gravity all the way down, nothing will really happen because the liquid can't really go anywhere if there's no gravitational pull. But you guys get the picture. Now you know how to turn any object into a fluid object, drop it within your domain and have it basically just turn into a liquid and react as it probably would in real life. Remember, the more realistic that you want it, you have to free all and rebake your simulation with a higher resolution division. So this number right here on the right hand side, basically you can think about that as realism. The higher you turn that, the more realistic the physics simulation is going to be. And if you want it to be even more realistic, what I would suggest is scaling everything to real world size. In other words, literally go into this tab right here, look at your dimensions and your scale and figure out the exact metrics of what you're trying to simulate. That way you'll have a much higher chance of getting something that actually looks realistic. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will go ahead and render that out and show that at the end, the uh, Suzanne render. I might modify a few things, but I hope you learned something. Um, I know a lot of you in the latest poll had suggested that you wanted to see more physics simulations. So that is actually what I went ahead and did. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. There will be more future content around this subject of physics simulations and uh, anything else that you guys suggest to me, I'll probably end up covering it. So there's a lot to learn in Blender and I hope you guys at least learned something about um, the physics world here and what you are able to accomplish with just, uh, just clicking on that quick effects, quick liquid. There's just so much you can do with just that. So um, it's a really good template to start out with. So guys, take it easy and I will see you in the next YouTube tutorial. Have a good one.